So that's it, guys, for day two of 2020 preseason testing. And now it's time to review the events of day two and all the talking points, and we're going to get straight into it. But first, before we get into the teams and how they got on during day two of preseason testing, let's first look at the times and the amount of laps everyone did during the day. So here is the top 10 on day two. Kimi Raikkonen, of fastest of all, 117 0, 134 laps. He did breakdown at the end of the day but apparently that was him or alfa romeo deliberately running out of fuel don't ask me why i have no idea why they would do that sergio perez second 117.3 145 laps ricardo 17.7 in third 41 laps uh, alban 17 932 laps and then gasly fifth 18.1 146 laps and then sebastian vettel sixth 118.1 72 laps george russell 118.2 116 laps and then charles leclerc did the morning for ferrari 118.3 49 laps lewis hamilton also did the morning 118.3 106 laps and orlando norris 118.4 uh, 136 laps and then p11 p12 and p13 roman grosjean 118.4 158 laps that's the most laps done by any one driver but not team the most laps of today was done by the silver arrows mercedes esteban ocon 51 laps at a 118.5 and then valtteri bottas 119.3 77 laps and talking of valtteri bottas and mercedes let's get straight into them now of course, we weren't going to see the real pace of the Mercedes today. The car on track in terms of balance looked mostly very good. Reliability, slight concern because their day was ended early by an electrical issue on the car. That's why they did not really go out for the final hour or so of day two of testing. So a bit of a, I guess, a slight worry there, but they should be able to fix it. Uh, but reliability before that was very good. Again, most laps completed by any team. And again, Balance of the car looked very, very good. But the biggest talking point to come out about Mercedes from day two of testing is this new steering system called DAS, dual axis steering, and then, of course, system. Now, essentially, what we think it does is it adjusts the toe of the car whilst going down the straight. And, of course, if you do that, it can help straight line speed and give them a bit more speed on the straights and how they were doing this is in the morning and Valtteri Bottas as well was caught doing this as well uh, pulling the steering wheel I think out to adjust it and then pushing it uh, back in again when at the end of a straight um, people have questioned the legality of it Helmut Marco from Red Bull thinks it isn't legal from what I've seen I think it is you know mostly legal I think the only thing that could really harm its chances of staying on the car is the possible safety aspect but in terms of the technical side i think it's a, a very cool and very good innovation and i think they will get away with it so good to see from mercedes there another innovation and yeah i think they will keep it but very interesting to see that on the onboard camera of the car today but other than that i think definitely mostly good day Next up, Ferrari, and good news for Ferrari after Sebastian Vettel missed yesterday. He was back in the car today, this afternoon, and Ferrari, like they did yesterday, not pushing, of course, like the other two teams are, but they're not taking it, you know, you're not, you're not, they're not pounding around the track as much as other teams are. They're not getting the miles in as much, again, as other teams are. So that is a slight concern that they're not willing to be out there on the track as much as, again, Mercedes, Red Bull, even teams like uh, Haas F1 today, for example, they weren't putting in as many laps as maybe you would have hoped from Ferrari. But the car on track, the balance looks, well, compared to the rest of the field, I mean, it's still going to be one of the, you know, two or three best cars on the grid. Still, though, when watching on board, you can still see in the slower corners that understeer that did plague them last year, especially in turn 5 and turn 10. You could really see how the front just wasn't biting into the corner and just wasn't getting into the apex. Like, again, the Mercedes, when you saw that on board, it was able to get a lot closer to the apex. So 
Still a concern when it comes to that. But other than that, not much to say on Ferrari. They're not pushing, of course, like the other two teams uh, are, of course, not pushing as well. Hopefully, we're going to see a bit more of the Ferrari tomorrow on day three. Next up, Red Bull. And yeah, similar day for Albon to what Max Verstappen had yesterday. Of course, Red Bull not pushing. Reliability is what they're focusing on. And they do have reliability um, in bags full. And the Honda engine is looking very good when it comes to reliability. And I think definitely Red Bull can be happy with the reliability of the Red Bull Honda as a whole. And on track in terms of balance, the Red Bull car doesn't look great it doesn't amaze you but it does look very comfortable to drive as the red bull car of last year especially the end of last year also did look so good looking car and as ever red bull in i think good shape with the balance of that car but now into the midfield we go mclaren first up and mclaren today were focusing on um a setup for uh, the race or, or you know on race fuel and that is of course a very important thing to focus on in formula one so we didn't really get to see as much of i guess the lower fuel pace of the mclaren as we did yesterday with carlos Sainz. but the mclaren on track still looks good again nothing amazing or, or nothing to get excited about um compared to the top teams mercedes ferrari or red bull but i think it looks yeah a good decent car for mclaren so far reliability seems to be there um, again like red bull in bags full so i think mclaren can call that a very good day and hopefully their good reliability really does continue into day three next up though is renault and i've got to say i think out of all of the teams renault have probably had so far the worst pre-season testing program when it comes to the grip of the car on track, it doesn't look bad or terrible. It, again, it's it, like the McLaren. It doesn't absolutely amaze you, but I wouldn't say, you know, it's a horrible car or it's definitely off the pace. But I have to say the performance of the Renault team, you know, mechanics, engineers, whatever, in getting the car out on track, ready for the morning, the afternoon sessions, I'm sorry, not good enough. Apparently, they were 30 minutes late in getting him out on track this morning, getting Daniel Ricciardo out on track. And then Esteban Ocon wasn't out on track for, what, an hour, hour and a half, I think it was. I'm sorry, not good enough. And this was the same thing they did yesterday as well. They have got to be doing this better. And they didn't even hit, with Ricardo and Ocon in the car today, they didn't even hit 100 laps today, which, yeah, three or four years ago would have been fine. But when you've got Haas F1 doing almost 160 laps and Alpha Tauri doing, what, 120, McLaren doing 135, I think, I'm sorry, it's not good enough. Renault have got to be better prepared. And I've got to be out on track longer because the longer they're not ready, they're losing valuable track time, valuable data. They've got to get out there on track and really start putting some laps in because so far, Renault just haven't really featured a lot during pre-season testing and they've got to do more so, especially tomorrow on day three. Next up, Alpha Tauri. Um... I'd say for Alpha Tari today, a much better day than day one. I mean, day one, of course, in the morning, they were running a bit more conservatively and they had slight uh, technical issues with their car. Today, uh, no issues with the car. The car on track looked very good in terms of the balance, reliability's there. The speed, I actually think they've got quite a fast car there. I don't think it's, you know, amazingly quick. Uh, compared to other midfield rivals. But I think right there, just looking at the way the car looks on track, I think they have got a nicely balanced, well-working car for uh, 2020. So the car looks good on track, reliability's there. I think definitely you can say a very good day. I would though like to see more of it on track to get a better understanding in terms of the balance of the car. Uh, but from what I've seen, it's a good car and I don't think there's anything really to complain about about this team next up racing point and they continued their fantastic day one performance with again sergio perez right up there he was fast uh, fastest sorry for most of 
uh, day two until Kimi Raikkonen put in a late time on the C uh, C5 compound of tyre. Um, Sergio Perez drove very well. Racing point looked very good on track. Again, the balance looks a lot better than it did this time last year uh, when it was at, you know testing in 2019. And still, you can tell the pace difference between you know last year's racing point is massive and if you look at all of last year's midfield teams i think racing point in terms of pure lap time compared to what they did last year you're going to notice they are going to be the biggest gainers i think this season i think it's pretty clear to see already that they are quite a bit ahead of where they were this time last year and racing point didn't have last season a horrible season i mean at the start of the season uh, in 2019 they were actually quite competitive so i think racing point have definitely got a good car whether it's a mercedes car or not doesn't matter they have got i think a properly quick racing car for 2020 next up is alfa romeo again alfa uh caused the late and the first red flag of testing which is very surprising not to have a red flag you know for that long uh by again deliberately running out of fuel which i don't quite understand but there you go uh, Kimi Raikkonen, most of the day, focused on race runs, you know, race simulations, getting a balance over that. When we looked at the car on board, it looked a bit ponderous in its turn into some corners, but compared to last year, it doesn't really look any worse or any better, uh, again, than last year. But the only bad thing, other than, the you know, running out of fuel again deliberately at the end... The only bad thing, and I know don't read too much into lap times, but the only bad thing about today, I think, was when he did a lower fuel run, and he definitely did do a lower fueled run when he says 117.0. On the C5 compound, if you compare that to what Perez did, it wasn't at all an impressive lap time from Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, he's definitely not, and I agree. The engine modes aren't turned up. He wasn't very skinny on fuel, but to be on that compound of tyre and to only do a 17-0 and be about, you know, a quarter of a second faster than Perez when he should be quite a bit faster, again, not that impressive of a lap time. And I guarantee you if Perez on the similar engine mode or similar fuel was on that tyre, he probably would have, you know, gone straight into the 1 minute 16s, probably... A 16.5 or a 16.4 at least. So, again, for Alpha, compared to Racing Point, not that impressive. But hopefully, we see a bit more lower field running from Alpha Romeo tomorrow. Next up is Haas. And, well, the day was going so well. They, you know, again, Grosjean did the most amount of laps for any driver. 158 laps. Going so well. Consistency was there. Reliability is definitely there. And then Roman Grosjean goes and puts it in the barriers at turn four with... I don't think it was a driver mistake. I think it was just a weird snap of oversteer. He wasn't running exactly on line on the exit of turn four. He was running maybe slightly wide. But the rear end just completely snapped away from him. And he went straight into the barriers. Broke a bit of his rear wing off. And was out of the session. But up until that point, very good. We never really got to see the Haas on... Um, on tv though so i can't really tell you anything about what the balance of the car looks like but again reliability is there so i guess except for the crash a mostly good day and the final team is williams who had another good day again russell a lot faster than what he was going this time last year in pre-season testing on his second day of uh 2020 testing and that is of course a great thing to see and i think you can already tell that this williams car out of the entire field will be the biggest improvers in terms of their lap time compared to what they did this time last year uh which is not a massive surprise because they really should be gaining the most amount of time out of anyone but it is good to see that progression is being made again car on track when we looked at the onboards the onboard of the williams the car did look good. It looked a lot better than last year. So maybe it doesn't look good in comparison to other cars. But again, compared to last year, a lot better. The front end is a lot better. The rear end is sticking a lot more. The Williams car is miles better. Absolutely miles better than it was this time last year. So good to see. And hopefully Williams are going to continue this into day three and the second test as well. But that's it for day two, guys. Don't forget to join me tomorrow for my watch along with the afternoon session of day three. 
And don't forget as well to check out my review of day three as well. Hopefully a day three where we get to see the teams push just that little bit more.